I would like to first of all recognize uh, Ms. Jordan. Ms. Jordan, please, you have five minutes. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman Soblin and Ranking Member Owens and members of the committee. I'm really pleased to be here to testify today. Uh, as, uh, my name is Phyllis Jordan. I'm Associate Director at Future Ed, which is the chairman said is a nonprofit think tank at Georgetown and nonpartisan and uh, led by Thomas Tuck. Um, as you both stated, the impact of the pandemic on learning is clear. Test after test shows that students have lost um, or fallen behind where they should be at this point. The clients are greatest for students who are already struggling in school and those from low-income families. So this is a widening achievement gaps. And uh, beyond the academic indicators, we saw absenteeism rise and student um, engagement fall. Teachers are stressed out and they're stretched thin. There's three questions we need to answer about the money that Congress has appropriated to help states and school districts address these challenges. First is how are they planning to use the unprecedented infusion of federal money to address learning loss? Second, are they spending it effectively? Third, and probably most important, what will the impact be on student achievement? To help answer these questions, Future Ed analyzed trends in ESSER spending plans for 5,000 school districts educating 74% of the nation's students. Our analysis suggests that at this stage, educational leaders are taking the steps they need to help students gain ground. A substantial body of research points to interventions that can accelerate learning in the months and years ahead. And we've seen these strategies in many spending plans. For instance, about 60% of the local spending plans designate money to extend students' learning time into summer, after school, or both, with about $3.7 billion to be spent in those categories. That number could reach $6.3 billion if trends continue through September 2024. Tutoring is another smart evidence-based strategy. About a third of districts are putting money toward tutoring and coaching, mostly for math and reading. And when an investment, we expect to reach $3 billion nationwide. Um, based on what we've seen in these plans, we project that local agencies will spend more than $27 billion of the ESSER three money on academic recovery interventions by September 2024. We project they'll spend another $30 billion on teachers and staff, much of which is going to learning loss priorities like academic coaching and reducing class sizes. And we estimate $26 billion will go toward school facilities and operations, particularly ventilation upgrades. Taken together, these priorities account for about 75% of local education agencies' designated ESSER three spending with technology and physical and mental health rounding out the total. The local investments come on top of requirements for states to collectively spend at least $1.2 billion in ESSER funds for summer learning, $1.2 billion for after school, and $6 billion more for addressing learning loss. Um, we broke down the spending by school district poverty rates, and we found that places where, with more students in poverty are prioritizing academic recovery spending for instructional materials like textbooks and new curriculum, while the more affluent districts are focused more on after-school programming and summer learning. Likewise, we found rural districts were more likely to invest in instructional materials and less likely to spend on extended time than their city and suburban counterparts were. When we looked at state partisan lean, we found that nearly the same percentage of districts in red and blue states earmarked ESSER three funds for social emotional learning. Both have made hiring and rewarding teachers their top priority, and they plan to spend on similar rates on tutoring. In terms of how the spending is going, the latest data suggests that districts have spent almost all of the money allotted in the CARES Act, which must be obligated by the end of this month. They're well into investing the second round of ESSER, but most haven't spent much of the ARP money. A few things to keep in mind here. Reporting lags behind actual spending. So do district requests for reimbursement from state ed education agencies. And spending totals don't reflect what's committed for the years ahead. Another challenge is that many districts can't find the people they want to hire. The pandemic has exacerbated longstanding shortages in critical teaching areas like special ed, science, and math. And with many districts hiring more teachers and specialists, there's simply more positions to fill. This is true for tutoring and extended time programs, too. At the same time, we're seeing several encouraging trends. First, the infusion of COVID relief dollars has supercharged efforts to train teachers in a phonics-based approach to teaching reading. Second, post-pandemic shortages in federal funding have led more districts to break away from a single teacher pay scale and target dollars for hard-to-fill slots. Third, several states and school districts are developing permanent tutoring infrastructures that could add an important instructional component. 
Fourth, schools are bringing in mental health professionals and training teachers in social emotional learning to help students navigate their emotions and relationships. A long overdue recognition that emotional, I have almost done, <laughs> that emotional well-being plays an important role. Finally, state and districts are using ESSER money to commission research to determine what's working and could spread best practices and guide post-pandemic educational investments. Thank you for the opportunity to share future ed's research. Yeah. No, thank you very much.